Hi there guys, welcome back to my tutorials. In this tutorial I want to cover some basic color correcting in uh, Photoshop. Uh, for this project I had this photo of my girlfriend Nicole. This is us uh, whenever we were in uh, Baltimore. And as you can see it's a very very drab, dreary day. Uh, to start off, what I want to do is basically color correct this and make sure that I get all the contrast boosted up here. This photo is uh, from my camera and my camera takes some very, not very nice pictures. Um, most cameras that are not professional level will take pictures that lack a lot of contrast. And as you can see here, the uh, picture has an overall gray quality about it. I can really bring up some of the brightness and some of the flesh colors within her face and kind of bring out some of the highlights of the sky here and also make these buildings darker, kind of giving that nice contrast between the sky, uh, the uh, horizon level, and then the actual subject here, Nicole, give her more of a uh, human color, I guess. So the first thing that I want to do is, is I want to change my image size. My camera takes pictures at about 36 inches wide by about 27 inches tall, and they're 72 dots per inch. Now when you're working with photos and you're looking to print them out, you want to work with, with about 300 dots per inch. If not, your photos will be about 72 dots per inch, and you only want to have those if you're going to keep these to the screen. So if you're going to email these or just put these up on the web, you want to keep these as at the lowest file size as possible. But I want to print these out, so I'm, I'm going to change my photo resolution to 300 dots per inch and kind of bring down the size of this to about 8 by 6 so I can print this out on a uh, page. The first thing I want to do is, is uh, change the image size. That's under the image pull down menu and the option called image size. When I go here, my document size says that my width is 36 inches and my height is 27 inches. Let's change my width to 8 inches which will make my height 6 inches. Uh, that happens because I have my constrained proportions on. If this is off, you have to manually change each one of these items here. So my resolution will change to about 300 dots per inch. And when you're finished with that, press OK. There's a subtle change, but you can tell that my size is different because of my rulers. It goes through 8 inches wide to 6 inches tall. So to get to the color correcting part of this, we want to go back to our image menu so go to your image pull down menu, and all the color correction options are under the adjustments menu. There are five things that I want to hit today. That's our levels, our curves, your color balance, brightness and contrast, and your hue saturation. Now, Photoshop gives you these options for these auto levels, auto contrast, auto color. You don't want to use these too often because to get the best results, you want to keep everything within your uh, control. Whenever you let Photoshop do the job for you, it's not really doing what you want to do. To get the best results is probably to use each of these items manually. So go to levels first. And from here, we can see that we have our histogram. What this shows us is we have our lights that exist in the photo, which is all of this bright color right here. We have our midtones, which there's not many of. The, most of these are the lights or their darks. And our darks exist on this far left hand side. So what this histogram tells us is that all the darks start a little bit inward from the uh, darkest point that Photoshop can uh, map. So to make our darks darker, just bring this little triangle in to the point where it starts. And the same thing with this other side with the lightness, you want to bring this in to where that histogram begins. And you can already begin to see that there are some lightness here, that we're getting some uh, darker colors here. And the last step in this in this part here is to adjust this middle part. Here you can adjust to make it darker, lighter, or how you want to make it look. So take your time and do this. When you're finished doing your uh, levels, just press OK. The next step is going to be our curves. So under our image pull down menu, go down to the adjustments side menu and pick on curves. Now curves are similar to your uh, levels, you can see that you have a histogram in the background of our curve here. And also, in the upper right hand corner is the brightest part of our photograph. And in the bottom part, in this bottom left, is our darkest part of the photograph. So by adjusting this line and kind of clicking on these, on this line, you can adjust the lightness and the darkness of your photograph. So take your time here. Because if you rush, you're not going to be able to see all of the possibilities in which you can have here. And the curves give you the ultimate flexibility. You can do almost anything with these curves. So take your time and ultimately the, what we're trying to do is make our subject look the best. 
and uh, Nicole looked good anyway, so we'll just make her look a little bit better here. So, okay, take your time here. It may take a little bit of time. Okay, when you're finished with that, press the OK button. Then go back to your image and your adjustment menu. And let's go to our third option here, which is our color balance. In this menu here, we have six different options. We have our CMY, which is our cyan, magenta, and our yellow. On the other side, we have our red, green, and our blue, which is our RGMB levels. If you look below, you'll see your tone balance. Here, we can adjust our midtones, our highlights, and our shadows. Let's begin with the midtones, and we can adjust these colors here and bring in some more reds, bring in some more magentas, or some more greens. So, based upon your own um, idea. I'm going to make this photo look as best as you can. Next step is we'll go to our highlights. And because our photograph is mostly comprised of our highlights, you'll notice that these adjustments will take extreme effect here. So even the slightest movement of our red will bring in a lot more red than we really, really, really want. So, But this will change depending upon the photograph that you're using. With some dark photos, your shadows will uh, have the most effect. Let's do our shadows here. We can add some more reds into it. Add some more magentas or some more greens. And more blues or yellows. So take your time with this here as well. When you're finished with that, you can press OK. Our next step is to go to our brightness and our contrast. In this part, we only have two options. We have our brightness and our contrast. Brightness affects the brighter colors of our photograph. So as we bring this up here, we can really accentuate the brightness of those colors. Notice that the dark colors have very little effect. If we bring it the other way, we can make it look, look darker. This is almost like a nighttime picture here. So we can almost change the time of day depending upon how we adjust this. So let's bring in the brightness a little bit. And the contrast, as you bring it up to a positive scale, you're going to see that it really accentuates the light and the dark colors. If you bring your contrast back back down to a negative 50, this will bring it down to make it look kind of like grayer and almost like it's a really muddy, muddy day. Baltimore is not that beautiful anyway in, in the uh, wintertime, so bringing your contrast down is going to make it look all that more horrific. So let's bring up the contrast some there. The brightness a little bit more. And when you're finished with that, you can press OK. Our next step is to go to our hue and our saturation. So with that, you can do this right here. Our hue is the overall color. So as you adjust this, you're going to notice that what you can do is adjust the entire color here. So let's bring in some more reds here. Bring our hue up to about a positive 11 or so. The saturation adjust the amount of color you have in your photograph. As you bring the saturation up, you have a lot more color there. And if you bring it down, you have what is a lack of color, almost like a black and white picture. So let's bring it up to here, we'll bring in some more saturation so to really accentuate some of the colors of her face. And finally, the lightness affects the overall lightness of the photograph. As you bring this up, it gets lighter and lighter. Now, there's a difference between the lightness and the brightness. The brightness only affects the lighter colors. However, the, the lightness affects the overall quality of the image. So to affect the, the lighter colors, use your brightness. To affect the overall image itself, your, your lightness is uh, gonna work here. Okay, when you're finished with this, you can press okay. And to check your work, you can go to your history panel. You can access it here from your history icon, or you can go to your, your window pull down menu, go to your history button. Here we have the history of what we've done. It's basically in a step-by-step -step organization. And if you go back to your image size, which is where the original uh, size of the image happened, we can click on that and see the original photograph. You can see this one's very dark, very, very drab, very cloudy day. If we go to our last step, You'll see that we have a brighter day, it almost looks like a summertime picture, or something very nice here. Uh, Nicole has more of a flesh color here, and we also have some brighter colors in the sky, and the buildings in the background and the horizon look better here as well.